Hi everyone, it's me, Claire, back from the Dickinson College Farm, and today we're going to be talking about the animals that we have at the farm. Currently, we have sheep, chicken, and cows. And once again, we'll be having Danielle and Matt join us today to help us talk about how the sheep and the cows are used on the farm. So first up, we will be talking about sheep. Sheep are ruminant, which means they are a mammal that have hooves and have a complicated stomach. So what ruminants do is after they eat the food, they will regurgitate it back up. So they will bring the food from their stomach back to their mouth and then they'll chew it more and then they will swallow it again. And this way they can just further chew their food and make it easier for their body to digest. All sheep are vegetarians. The sheep's diet here at the farm includes clover grass, timothy grass, and then broad leaf plants, as you can see in the last photo. These are some examples. Rotational grazing is what happens when we have animals graze in a spot of grass, and then we move them to a different one before they eat all that completely down, and then they keep moving on to different pastures, different small pieces that they eat down, and then once the original one regrows, we bring them back to it. So we make this circuit where the grass gets eaten down but not completely destroyed, and it actually keeps the grass healthier because it's able to grow back and create new growth in this cycle, and we go until about winter when grass stops regrowing, and then we let the animals eat hay. So there's four different words you can use to describe a sheep. There's lambs, which are under a year old. There's ewes, which are female sheep that are older than a year. There's rams, who are sheep that are older than a year and able to breed with the ewes. And then there's weathers, which are male sheep that cannot reproduce with the ewes. A ram is a boy sheep and typically they have curved horns and they have like longer fur. They won't have like the curly fur that the ewes will have and their hooves are split. Whereas ewes have shorter ears and they often can have horns too and their hooves are not split. Ew is normally what you think of when you think of a sheep, you think of an ewe. When our sheep are not at the farm, they go to the solar fields in Carlisle to help graze the grass there. I'm here with the sheep in the solar field. They're absolutely loving the shade of the solar panels right now. We have the ewe herd in here and the ram herd is in a different solar field. What that does is it keeps the grass cut and down without using any fossil fuels for like a mower or weed whacker. The sheep do all that for us and they uh, eat the grass down and love it. So they also get to enjoy the benefit of having the shade of the solar panels and overall it's the perfect uh, symbiotic relationship with the sheep keeping the grass down and continuing to produce for us. It's getting late in the season so pasture's winding down so we're trying to take advantage of the pasture that we have left and uh, before we have to go to hay which they do like but not quite as much as the fresh stuff. Every springtime here at the farm, the sheep get sheared, which basically means that they get a big haircut. After they get sheared, their wool can then be repurposed and reused. The wool can be spun into yarn, which will then be knitted with to make clothing, or can be used to make dryer balls, which is a really good way to replace single-use dryer sheets in your house. The sheep on the right have been sheared and the sheep on the left have not. This is JJ. She's actually named after my brother because I think they little look a lot alike. She's got the freckles and the curly hair. And she's very friendly. She's one of our favorites. The next animal that we have here on the farm are chickens. We have red sexling chickens here. The main benefit that they do is they provide us fresh eggs and the eggs are normally eaten by the farm crew or they go to the CSA which is the Campus Sustained Agriculture. Chickens also eat a lot of bugs. Boy chickens are called roosters and a girl chicken is called a hen. So roosters typically have, um, they have larger wattles, which is the skin that hangs underneath their neck and beak. 
neck feathers, which are also called hackle feathers. They are longer and pointier, and then typically roosters are, their feathers are showier and more colorful, and this is so that roosters want to look really pretty for hens, and it's like another way for them to attract a mate. Hens, they are the ones that lay your eggs. They're the ones that provide you with your eggs every morning or your eggs for cooking and baking. They have smaller waddles and their hackle feathers are shorter and rounder. They are not the pretty looking chickens. Nor if you go anywhere and you see chickens and you're like, that is a really pretty chicken. It is probably a rooster. Hi everybody, I'm Farmer Matt. And uh, I'm in charge of the livestock here at the college farm. Um, here we raise grass-fed beef. Uh, these are some of the beef cattle behind me. The cows that we have at the farm, we have 10 breeding cows. They are Black Angus and Angus Hereford Crosses. One of the reasons why we raise grass-fed beef here is uh, we're trying to give people the opportunity to connect with their food supply. So if you ever wondered where a hamburger comes from, uh, it comes out of a beef animal, uh, like a cow or a bull or a, a steer. And um, we raise them here on the farm. And our, our animals are very uh, low stress. We keep it a very low stress environment. Uh, we're actually certified by an outside group for our animal welfare handling. So we do what's called animal welfare approved handling of our animals. So we like to keep them nice and mellow. And, uh, they usually, most, for the most part, they stay pretty calm. And uh, out of one mature animal, uh, you can get a lot of hamburgers. Um, typically, uh, we might get about 800 pounds of meat out of one mature animal. And that's like, um, well, that's uh, like 3,200 quarter pounders. Uh, so it's a whole lot. You know, a couple thousand people could eat out of about one cow. So, um, you know, we don't like killing them. They're real friendly. Uh, but uh, we keep it real low stress and, and uh, we do it in a humane way um, and uh, the animals, uh, they're pretty cooperative. Today they're in the cow house taking some shade, but uh, the rest of the day today they're going to be outside and pretty much all summer long they're outside on the grass. So they're out on pasture eating grass, eating clover and other herbs. And uh, that's a little bit different than if we had them all confined in a barn all the time and we were bringing them uh, corn and soybeans. We have grass-fed animals. Uh, they do their own harvesting. So they go out there, collect, they collect their food um, and they eat it right there in place and they spread their own fertilizer. So, uh, you know, everybody, everybody poops, including cows. And uh, when they do, that's really good for the soil good fertilizer, there are lots of nutrients in there. So uh, we like to let them do that out on the pasture so the grass just keeps kind of growing naturally. Uh, our main input to the pastures is sunshine and management. Part of our job as a grass-fed farm is uh, we need to move the cows and the sheep around just about every day so that they don't eat too much of the grass. Um, they kind of eat some grass one place, then they move to the next place, eat there, and then after about 30 days, they might come back and eat that grass again. So it's kind of like if your parents had a lawn uh, and they only mowed it every 30 days, so grass would get pretty tall. Uh, and then there'd be nice grass for the cows to eat. So uh, these are our lawn mowers here. And Each year here on the farm, we raise calves and then we raise them for about two to three years and then they join the breeding herd. And the breeding herd is the um, 10 breeding cows. So the manure from the cows is collected and composted or it's used for the biogas as we talked about last video. So if you remember from last video, we got the manure for, for the biogas from the cows next door and those cows are dairy cows and they are the ones that dairy cows just provide milk. So next up, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make scrambled eggs and it's really fun and easy to do. Anyone can do it. I can do it. I'm not a very good cook, but I can do it. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to make scrambled eggs. The ingredients you need are eggs, some salt, some pepper, and then just some olive oil for the pan. And let's get into it. 
Okay, so step one is you're gonna take the eggs, however many you want. I'm not super hungry, so I'm just gonna take one. And you're just gonna crack it into your bowl and scramble up with a fork. You wanna make sure not to get any shells in your scrambled eggs. And now I'm just gonna take a fork or you can take a whisk and you're just gonna mix it up really well. This is what the egg batter looks like. You can either choose to add the salt and pepper now in the mixture or you can add it afterwards. I choose to add it afterwards because I season to taste. And now we're gonna head over to the stove. Okay, so now we're gonna get to the actual cooking of the eggs. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn your stove top on and I like to turn mine to medium and for my stove top that's about five. And I'm choosing to use like a smaller pan just because I only have one egg, but if you were cooking multiples, I would obviously use a bigger pan. So let this heat up. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour a little bit of olive oil on. I choose to use olive oil just because it's a little bit healthier than using butter, but either works. Now that the pan has heated up, we're gonna get ready to pour our scrambled egg into the pan. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to want to smush all the eggs into the center and you're just going to keep pushing it with the spatula. And you want it to clump together. This is what you want it to look like. Now what you're, you're going to do once it clumps into one big clump in the middle, you're going to flip it over. So it's like you're picking up a ground ball in baseball or a cross or whatever. You just want to get the spatula completely under the egg. And you know what? It is okay if you mess up. The nice thing about scrambled eggs is that they don't have to be pretty. Now what we're doing with the eggs is we're just flipping them and flipping them until they get nice and crispy. And one thing you can do is in the pan after you flip them a few times is you can just chop them up to make them become more scrambled. And sometimes I'll do that and then just get a little chop chunks of them, whatever works, and I'm just going to keep flipping them over and over again until they become crispy, or however you like them to be cooked. Now that my eggs are to the, my desired crispiness, and they're nice and chopped up, all you have to do is first turn off your stove, that is the most important step. You got to grab a plate from your cupboard. And you're just gonna dump them. Ta-da! So now you can just season your eggs to your taste. I have to just put a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And you're good to go. Now you got some delicious scrambled eggs. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Once again, thank you to Farmer Matt and Danielle for helping out again with this video. And enjoy. Have a nice day, guys.